Hi, what's up? Uh, so, that other phone, I got interrupted because it ran out of space. I can see why I've been speaking for like ever in a day. But we are here now with my iPhone. As you can see, the quality is a little bit different. And it's currently charging, so this is the only position that I can come from. If it's not flattering, whatever, I'm done talking. Like, I'm so exhausted of, of speaking that flattery is the last thing that is on my mind. Okay. I was speaking in the previous part before I got cut that the color yellow represents has always represented to me personally fear and the color red has always represented some kind of involvement in sorcery so every time I see a person shrouded in red clothing or there's just like a whole bunch of red messaging in my dream I understand that there was witchcraft involved for instance I once had um, a dream when I applied for this one job in this season of mine of sorrow of darkness that I was going through of there being being a red ink a whole bunch of red ink uh like dotted and scratched and scraped over my curriculum vita uh when i applied for this one job god was basically telling me that your cv is so bewitched like there is so much sorcery on it that the person who is going to be receiving your application is going to fall under a spell the moment they open your cv so you're not going to get the job and lo and behold a whole bunch of time progressed and i i had gotten a call from the recruitment agency but they made a decision not to call me back again I've been very frustrated by that. I've seen the color red also uh, as clothing that certain witches in my family have worn in dreams when I got to see what they're doing. And also outside of my family, the color red has always been used in my dreams. That's what I'm trying to help you guys understand to depict or speak of uh, sorcery, the involvement of it. Okay. Uh, so therefore, when I see it, I know immediately what it means. Therefore, the guy, the, the, the prince in my dream, prince who had one snake red eye and one yellow red eye, was God showing me what the strategy of Satan is, what this prince, you know, this principality of over South Africa, how it operates. It operates through witchcraft, largely. That ain't no, uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Surprise. Because South Africa is extremely witchy. Like, they just can't stop casting spells on each other. Every second guy in the street is involved in some kind of occult activity, and everybody else that's not involved in it is just suffocating under it. The whole nation is falling apart because of involvement in it and I spoke about that in the series that I covered yesterday. There is a real big fat chunky bad problem with witchcraft in this country and it is not going anywhere in the absence of the intervention by God to rescue witches from the flames of hell because the ratio of them in comparison to people who don't practice is increasing on the daily and is reaching the double digit it digits if not already in the double digits. It is bad and you know how the Pareto principle operates. 80% cause and effect. 80% of the calamity on the ground is caused by 20% 20 20 of the people on the ground. So it's not that the majority of South Africans are witches, but the, the, the smaller number of them that are there is so are so destructive to the country at large and are wreaking havoc in our economy, in our family lives, in everything that we do as a society. It's ripping apart that, like, those values so much that they are literally causing about 80% of the uh, challenges or problems that South Africa has, which is are by the Pareto principle responsible for the demise of the country even though they're a small number in comparison to people who don't touch the stuff it's a Pareto principle and I would go so far as to say it's not just 20% but it's increasing uh, on the daily perhaps maybe in 2014 when I lost my job there were maybe 20% of them in the country but out of the 100% citizenship that is down here on the ground but I think the number is now uh, tapering towards 30% like people have joined the occult they have joined in their numbers they have dabbled in their numbers people who are muddying their garments with involvement in sorcery are increasing at an exponential rate increasing at an increasing rate and on the daily and there appears to be nothing that can be done about it but one can bring down 1000 two can bring down 2000 okay so as christians we have power to flatline these structures we are the restrainer and so we can snatch witches out from the flames of hell and so take them out from that quota take them out from the 20 percent and so reduce the numbers and so conquer these these the dark forces um they are a small number and so because they're a small number satan can't just use witchcraft because a small number of people will always inevitably for the life of me um you know get overwhelmed by the majority if the majority makes a decision to stand up and do something about it and so therefore the uh, the, uh, the, the secondary strategy of satan then becomes fear fear so the country's being run to the ground using witchcraft and since 
it is not the majority of South Africans that are involved in this darkness, but quite a small number, 20%, maybe 30 at most. Since the majority, 70% of the country, is not doing any such thing, Satan can't run with that alone. It can't be just witchcraft that is decimating everybody. It has to be a fear of the effects of it. Now, because witchcraft has so destroyed certain people's lives, and the way that it destroys is so tactless, in this country, uh, the sorcery that decimates, that martyrs, that whoremongers in this land is so tactless it makes people that are geniuses unable to get jobs it makes the best individuals in the south african workforce unable to get promotions it makes some of the most gorgeous women in the land unable to get found by husbands it makes people who are absolutely viable to do certain things just not do them it renders valid, viable, whole thriving souls worthless in a way that is detectable as witchcraft. It becomes obvious when it is in operation. It is not even pernicious or stealthy. It does not have a gradual incline. It does not have a, you know, a slow impending to a point where you can just think maybe time did a job on this particular ecosystem. You will literally believe, when witches have done their job on a person in my country, it's clear that witches have done a job. There are some people who go through their lives having been afflicted by witches and it just looks like, ah, you know what, life happens. You win some, you lose some. You lose a job, but guess what? You got another one, you know? You had a miscarriage, but hey, you'll have another baby next year. Yeah, you, like sometimes witchcraft in other places looks like life happens. But in my country, it looks like witchcraft. It looks like supernatural activity. It's ibozapa. It's untidy. It's messy. It's tactless. Do you understand? It has got no, um, what do you call this? No self-control. It's not guarded, regulated. It has no glamour. Imbe. And it, it becomes obvious that that's what it is. So victims of sorcery on the in this country of extreme witchcraft, they are looked upon by the rest of the South African population ka sorrow in the sense that people pity victims of witchcraft in this country. They see that that's what they are. But out of fear of being done that too too, out of fear of essentially enduring what it is that the person that they're gazing upon with pity went through, they stay away. They don't help, they don't intervene, they don't want to touch the thing. Literally, witchcraft in this country converts its victims into lepers. Lepers. People that society avoids because if I touch it, it might just be me. Witches are essentially heralded and worshipped in this country because of the fact that people are scared of them. There are countries that would decimate a witch upon getting busted, but in this country, she is scooted away from, lest she should touch you. There is a fear of people involved in the occult in my land. However, those that are ravaged by it in communities that can't come up for it already, um, stand up against witches but in a, in an ungodly fashion there is a lot of vigilante activity against sorcery in our townships in our villages in this country witches get burnt uh, literally people necklace them they tie them there's no justice that is ever brought because police can't figure out what happened because everybody keeps quiet if you get caught for being a witch you could get clubbed to death you could get necklaced burnt with a tire around you you could get um burned just in jefe, like, p p people putting pe petrol or paraffin on you and light you up they can beat you up and until you die they literally the ways in which witches get dealt with in townships villages rural areas in this land is gruesome but in the urban areas where i am at they tend to just get left alone and people scoot away from them because such ways of dealing with witches are unacceptable amidst the gentrified so um witches who operate and do their dirty deeds in urban south africa essentially get away with a whole bunch of murder it is only those that like i mentioned with the story sega porsche um in my previous part it is only those that operate in rural areas that face like uh, vigilante dealings that face martyrdom for their cause they're the only ones that face death when they practice their dark arts but the rest of them they get they get away with it and not that i am saying it's okay to vigilantically kill a witch but i am saying that uh, victims of witches in urban areas are more especially just left alone uh, to languish to die to disappear into the air with no justice at all we are more subjugated to the tyranny of witches getting away with murder even than areas that tend to take matters into their own hands so if you live in urban down like central johannesburg if you find yourself living in suburbia of any city of any of our provinces as a victim of witches you will probably die with people scooting away from you avoiding you like you're a leper next part